Natuurpark Lederstad is the beating heart of conservation in the Netherlands. This park opened in the 1970s when one of the world's oldest zoos, Amsterdam's Royal Zoo Artis, needed more space for endangered Eurasian species. They looked to the new province of Flevoland. Created by the Dutch reclaiming land by damming the Zelder Zee, Lelestad became the capital of this province and the oldest town on this otherwise new virgin land. They created a 400 hectare park of varied habitats where endangered animals could roam free within the park, join with more common wild animals, creating a complex ecosystem and maintaining natural behaviour. Natural habitats like this is key for conservation when relocating species back into the wild, allowing them to keep their natural rhythm and behaviour of the species. The park played a big role in breeding programmes and reintroduction of these endangered species from across Europe and Asia. I wanted to share this little gem of the Netherlands and all the fantastic work that they do here, hopefully giving you a small glimpse into these majestic animals' lives and the place they call home, for now. One of the park's major roles has been in the breeding and transportation of Przelaski horses for reintroduction back into Mongolia. Coming from the name of the Russian colonel that discovered these Mongolian subspecies of wild horse, or Taki as the native Mongolian name. They were once found across Mongolia until 1967, when the last animals were seen in the wild, where once the greed of the world zoos are now the lifeline in protecting these species. Zoos around the world once kidnapped animals from the wild for their collection and capital gains, and are now the lifeline for many of these endangered species as the only remaining pockets of life for these animals after the massacre that humans have performed over Mother Nature this last century. Leilestad played a big role in the location these animals were all brought to to breed in semi-wild freedom, till 1992 when the first horses were released back into Hustan National Park in Mongolia. The European bison once roamed wild throughout large parts of Europe. This one here, choosing to wander off alone from the herd, tearing off the moss and bark of the tree, using its powerful neck muscles to strip the bark bare for its tasty breakfast. Fortunately, a breeding program initiated in Poland in the 1920s managed to save Europe's largest land mammal, now can be found in pockets from the coastal dunes to the woodlands of the Netherlands. European bison are normally taller than their American cousins, but on average weigh less. Still, European bison is the heaviest land animal in Europe. 
Bison's social structure has been described to specialists as a matriarchy, as it's the cows that lead the herd. Although larger and heavier than the females, the oldest and most powerful bulls are usually satellites that hang around the edges of the herd and protect the group. Territory held by bulls is correlated by age, with the young bulls tending to form larger home ranges than the older males. These young males coming of age often practice their sparring, getting ready for the rutting season. Wild boar, or Wildstein as known in Dutch, is one of the Netherlands' big five for wildlife spotters. Once declared extinct in the Netherlands, the population has rebounded strong across the country, still having a bad reputation as many wanting to cull large populations, having a nickname here of Nozums, or Yobs of the Forest, due to its spirited and confident persona. These omnivores are hoovers of the forest and will eat virtually anything that can be sniffed out by the boars. They use their highly sensitive nose and large heads to plough through the mud and soft ground litter to find its food. Its head is actually one third of its entire body length, whilst its powerful neck muscles allow the animal to upturn considerable amounts of soil and even rocks up to 50 kilograms. This powerful sense makes up for their bad eyesight and hearing, using their sense of smell as their main way to locate approaching danger. The snow is finally melting in the Netherlands and these wild boars are making the most of the mud pools revealing themselves. After enjoying wallowing in the mud, they retreat back to the cover of the forest, finding their favourite scratching post to rub off the drying mud from the sun. The big boar is still the boss when it comes to the best scratching posts. But this young male tried his luck when the alpha hog had his back turned. Some itches just need to be satisfied. Until caught red-handed by the dominant hog, charging the young male off his rubbing stump, making his dominance known in the sounder. After a nice rub, finding a nice spot in the sun for a midday nap, making the most of the changing season as the warm sun rays finally penetrate the forest floor.
As the snow melts, there are other signs that spring is around the corner. As snowdrops and daffodils begin to bloom, from the bulbs missed by the relentless appetite from the boars. The white stalks returning is another sign of spring growing ever near. These large carnivorous birds mostly hunt along the ground, taking any prey they can fit down the gullet. These monogamous birds both build these impressive nests that can last for several years and broods. These returning birds are strengthening their bond with their elaborate dance and bill clapping whilst throwing their heads back in the air. Before producing its only clutch of eggs for the summer, some spring cleaning is needed, carefully rearranging these large stick nests. Every stick having its place before the arrival of around four new chicks by spring, that they will brood up to 60 days. The grassland fields below the stalk towers, another unexpected animal can be found. The mouflons. Mouflons are not native to the Netherlands. They originated in Sardinia and Corsica to across the Caspian. These wild sheep were brought here to increase the animal's diversity and help protect the species. Hundreds of animals were released in parks across the Netherlands. They also work as their Dutch relatives would also, by controlling the grasslands and the many heather fields across the Netherlands, making it a more natural way for forest management whilst protecting a near threatened species. These ram males showing off their impressive curved horns, which can grow up to 85 centimetres. These are used mainly for the rutting season that takes place in autumn and early winter, where they use dominance to win the opportunity to mate with the females. These smallest of wild sheep are highly adapted to mountainous regions and cliff edges, the one things that the Netherlands can't offer them, though not having many real predators, they can stay safe in the lowlands. Otters have had a hard time across the country. The whole otter population hit 360 in 2020, after 16 years since being reintroduced. It was then recorded that at least 100 of these beautiful animals died due to road traffic incidents. They also face many other dangers, like fish traps and water pollution. As top of the food chain, water pollution can have devastating effects on otters due to the food they eat. This was the original reason of losing these animals in the first place, due to pollution coming from Germany and the industrial production along the River Rhine. With the amount of water in the lowlands, you would think the otter population will come back strong, but road traffic plays a big part on keeping these numbers low. Despite the fatalities, otter population has spread across the country from the original release sites. Inbreeding is another factor that worries conservationists, but as more otters cross the border from Germany and Belgium, this will help increase the diversity of the bloodline. This otter now safe in the protection of the park as he beds down in the reeds for his afternoon nap. As the sun sets over Lederstad Nature Park, this lifeline that has helped so many endangered animals across the world. <laughs>